Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to No Summary, Golden Threads Online Conversations with Artists Who Don't Fit in the Box. For those of you who don't know, Golden Thread is the first theater company in the U.S. devoted to the Middle East, founded by playwright and director Taran Jagiazarian in 1996. Uh, my name is Kate Morhini. I use she, her pronouns. I'm a director, producer, and dramaturg, um, and artistic producer of Noor Theater here in New York City. Um, I'd like to start today uh, with a land acknowledgement from Golden Thread Productions. Golden Thread acknowledges that the land we occupy is the home of the Ramatesh Ohlone people, known colonially today as San Francisco. As we recognize the ancestral stewards of this land and acknowledge that our presence here is a reminder of a history of colonization and dispossession, we are outraged by the U.S. administration's complicity in perpetuating the same cycle of oppression, land theft, and genocide in Palestine. Golden Thread Productions is dedicating its entire season to Palestine because we believe it's our duty as artists and culture makers to speak out against injustice and stand <clears throat> with the trust. This season is our response to the systematic and continuous erasure of the Palestinian people and the silencing of their stories, culture, and their history. We do this not only for Palestinians, but for our collective humanity. No summary this year, uh, and, uh, and in line with Golden Thread season for Palestine, embarks on a tour of four Palestinian cities to offer audiences in the US and beyond a taste of the Palestinian theater scene today. Each episode will spotlight a different theater, showcasing its history, notable performances, challenges, and life behind the scenes through interviews with its artists and community members. Today, we're honored to be joined by Amar Halil from El Hakawati Theater in Jerusalem. Such an honor to be here with you today, Amar. Um, I'll start out- Thank you. Uh, by, yeah, so glad to be with you. Um, I'll start out um, by reading uh, Amar's bio, Amar Halil was born and resides in Jerusalem. He began his theater career early with the El Hakawadi troupe in 1980, volunteering to sell tickets and assist during local tours in Palestine. Amar's relationship with the late Fr Francois Abu Salem, director and founder of El Hakawati, was distinctive and very special. Under Francois's guidance, Amar received intensive training in theater. In 1983, Amar co-founded the El Naza Hakawati Theater, later known as the Palestinian National Theater. Initially working behind the scenes in technical roles, he soon transitioned to acting. His stage debut was in 1985 with the play The Eye and the Sun, and he subsequently participated in most of the Hakawati troupe's productions. Throughout his career, Amr took numerous courses and workshops in acting and directing, learning from many Arab and international artists. From 1988 to 1991, he lived in Paris where he studied French and worked extensively with various theater groups uh, and as a resident artist. He gained valuable experience and training from French and Dutch directors and collaborated with European theater groups to further his education and skills. Amar's love for singing and traveling has always been an integral part of his theatrical work. Um, what an honor to be here with you today. Um, before Thank we you. dive in, yes, um, before we dive in, I just want to take a moment to welcome folks who are joining us here in the Zoom room and also those tuning into the live stream on HowlRound. Um, those who are here with us, please feel free to utilize the chat uh, to engage in the conversation, post comments throughout the conversation. Um, today, we're going to focus on the role of theater in Palestinian society and specifically the role of El Hakawati Theater. Um, so thank you so much again uh, for being here with us, Ahmed. I'd love to start by asking about your journey into the theater um, and the history of, of El Hakawati Theater in, in relation to that and your journey. Yeah, thank you for your introduction. Thank you for your words and for this opportunity to be with you. Well, my, I started theater very early. I was, uh, I was thrown out of school by 15, uh, 15 years old. And uh, my father took me to a training center. And there I learned electricity to the YMCA in Jerusalem. And there I met in Hakawati Theater. One day they say, go up, open the hall for a theater group. I was 15 years old. And there I meet El Hakawati. I see Francois. 
He looks French, he speaks Arabic. I say, are you French? He said, no, I'm Palestinian. And there it started. They made a show called the Mahjoub Mahjoub. For me, it was like the first time I see theater, I, first time I see a play. Uh, the day went on, I helped them, I worked with them. And slowly, slowly, uh, I became attached to the group. I became attached to, 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 to the idea of theater. Immediately after I finished my training being electrician, I went with Al Hakawati in 1983 to build the Nuzha Al Hakawati Theater. I became very close with the group and with Francois. I started as a technician to do light and sound. And as you say in my video, I like singing and I like I like theater, in fact, but it was like hidden. <laughs> so and Francois one day said, listen, you have to come and join us. Come watch the rehearsals because you will help us for the light and the sound. So I started going into the rehearsals. It was me and Iyam Abbas at that time. Iyam, she was a photographer of the group and I was a technician. And slowly, slowly, Francois said, you should jump. We improvised and we should go and try. This is how Francois made Hakawati. In Palestine, we have no theater school. It's all self-made. It's all self-educated. Francois and Hakawati was like the big school that trained hundreds of actors and directors. So it went all through uh, this uh, this building, Muzha al Hakawati, and through uh, through Hakawati Group. So in '85, I started my uh, my first show. So I was there as a technician and as an actor. And uh, yeah, slowly, slowly I went into the acting and did a lot, a lot of shows. We did Shakespeare, we did Brecht, we did Chekhov. I took small roles. And in 87, uh, I took my first big role in the story of Kofor Shamma. This is a play that has been, that tour like made 200 shows all over the world with big success. I made a main role there. And this is where I started my career as an actor. And as you say, in, in, the, like, in 88, I went to, to France and then I continue my study and I learned more and more about theater. Yeah. That's incredible. And you, I know you mentioned to me that um, that the, the theater became kind of like the, the ambassadors of, of Palestine yeah. to the world, starting yeah. to tour in, in 1979. And, and can you speak yeah, yeah, yeah. more about that? Yeah, and, yeah. and their role sort of internationally. Mm -hmm. Well, this will take me a little bit to the history of the beginning of the modern theater in Palestine. I mean, I don't want to talk about the 40s and the 50s and the 60s. I want to talk about after the 67 war. Theater was like, it was a political theater. Teachers, labor workers, students, they wanted to do theater. They want to be activists to liberate Jerusalem and Palestine. It was completely political theater. 69, 70, 71 was all these kind of young people who wants to do theater and a lot of groups at that time in the 70s. And this is where Francois Wassalim came and he created first a group called Balalin and then Sanduq al-Ajab, it's all groups in the 70s. And then Hakawati was established in 1977. It was the first professional theater group in, 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 in Palestine. And as I said, it's all self-educated, it's all self you know, self-experience and self-trying out things. Uh, in 79, there was a producer in Jerusalem who met Hakawati, and it was the first time a Palestinian theater group goes to Europe and to the world. And since 79, we have been touring with almost every year, we do like two, three months a year uh, tour in, in Europe. With the Hakawati shows, we have been all over the world, from Japan to Alaska. Uh, yeah, and uh, with many, many plays, and it's all in different languages. We play in English, we play in French, we play in Italian with subtitles. And in the middle of the 80s, Hakawati was like one of the 10 best groups in Europe. And the story of the ambassadors, we made a play called about Francois, this is after Francois passed away. 
we made a play called About Francois and a lot of articles, a lot of people in the in the press talks about the Hakawati was the ambassador, was like in the beginning, end of 70s, beginning of 80s, the first contact between theater people and the audience in Europe. I remember the shows in London, I remember in, in Paris, in Amsterdam. We were really like ambassadors. People come and see a theater show, and after the show, there is a big debate. We became the politician. We became the artist. We became the the the, the, the individuals who talks about Palestine. I was 18 years old. Where I sat in Riverside Studios, and after a show, the people are interviewing me and talking about politics about the show and about, because at that time there was little offices of PLO everywhere here and there, but there was no PA, there was no Palestinian Authority. And this Hakawati theater with their stories and with their message and with their plays, we really became the ambassadors. So many times they write about Hakawati, they say the ambassadors of Palestine. Hakawati theater is telling the story of this and this and this and this. And this is where I think the Hakawati got its important because we carried the story of theater and the story of the land and the story of the people. So we, this, is, this was like a very important uh, thing that, uh, and we have been like really uh, everywhere. So this was very, from the very beginning. Locally, the Hakawati was the theater that we built it was the first theater in Palestine. So in 83, we started building it. In 84, we opened the first theater equipped stage, light, sound. And from there, many theater groups became, you know, developed a lot of artists, a lot of people, a lot of young people who wants to be actors. And because of our relation, Francois, he's Hungarian. His mother is French, but he was born in Palestine and he always said he's Palestinian. So his relation to France, to Europe, we always had trainings, we always invite directors, we always invite actors. We made, we created our own training program where we really trained a lot of actors and made a lot of shows. So this is the connection between Hakawati inside Palestine and outside Palestine. Inside Palestine, we have been all over the country in small villages, in camps. We go with mobile theater, with our stage and light. And we do theater. We work three days to make 45 minutes show. And the whole village comes and the whole city comes. And, and this has been since the beginning till now. And now we are the Palestinian National Theater in Jerusalem. It's the big umbrella. It's the big house of the Palestinian artists and the theater makers. That's incredible. Thank you so much for, for sharing that, that rich history with us. Um, I'd love to hear more. So you you spoke a little bit about the, the way in which the, the theater was sort of self-made, self-trained, and then the creation of these training, this training program. And then also this this idea of mobile theater and going around the country. I'm curious how um, how that impacts the way that you create create work. I'd love to hear more more about that and sort of the um, the the your your approach and the theater's approach to creating work and how that's influenced by um, by yeah by that process. Yeah, I think I think the theater we make we make it for the, you know we do, we make theater for people who know we know the audience. We hear their stories, we hear their comments. We work the theater with our with 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 the dialogue, with the dialogue with the audience. You know, uh, the the training programs we do is like we have uh, we open the space for uh, students, young young men and women who are after eighteen. You know, then they want to to try and they want to. To, to, to share the idea and to, to like to taste the the, the, the the taste of theater. So we open this open days, we bring, you know, we invite them. And slowly, slowly we start to hear from them. We create our shows with them. It show the show takes like four or five months of improvisation. We create, yeah. We create, we create the show with the actors. 
Yeah, most most ninety percent of the Hakawati plays are from from the group itself. You know, big plays we mean. So it's like we hear from from the people. We hear what they want to to, to do, and we insist. We say that lie. I mean, culture is culture is like uh, creates people's humanity. Theater and culture creates helps to create people's humanity. So I think every every village, every city should have one day a year at least to see theater. So at one point I created something called the pocket theater, which we go with a full program of theater, uh, storytelling, uh, drama workshops. We go to a city or to a village and we like stay for one week and the whole city lives this experience of theater, movie, storytelling. We invite old men and women to tell us stories and uh, something that things very, yeah, we, we do things like we put on stage grandfather and father and son and like make improvisation and make, let them talk about all things they want to talk. So this is how we create our community work and community workshops. And the other, you know, the place for others, for adults and the big place we do in the theater with, uh, with more professional actors. That's incredible. I, I, I love hearing about your, your process. Four to five months of improvisation is incredible and working with the, with, so deeply with with communities across the country that's 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 truly that's incredible and um so so exciting to hear about um i know you also work in it, you also have festivals and and showcase different mediums within theater i'd be curious to know a, a little bit about that too from music to dance yeah. to poetry yeah. <laughs> uh well in palestine when you are in theater you do everything because like uh, we are the actors, we are the administrators, we do the light, we do, you know, it's like, we are really short of professionals in, in other, uh, you know, in terms of all the technical stuff. So so we learned all of it. So we learned all of it. Uh, I, was, uh, I was one of the founders of a very important festival in Jerusalem, and the, the Jerusalem festival that was created by, uh, initiated by Yabus Production. I was the artistic director for the festival. I did a lot of uh, exchange, a lot of workshops, a training uh, administration, art art management for young, uh, for young artists, for young people who wants to be in art administration. So I worked a lot on the artistic side and I developed a lot of quality and capacity on the management side and the technical side. So yes, I participated in, in I built two theater in Gaza and they are all destroyed now. I, uh, after, after building the Hakawati theater, we did it ourselves. Hakawati, the seven actors of Hakawati, we rented an old burned cinema. We cleaned it and we made it a theater. And from this experience, we learned how how a theater hall should be. So in two thousand in ninety four oh, in, in in ninety four after Oslo, I participated in uh, building the Holst Theater in Gaza. The Holst Theater was uh, donated by the Norwegian government after the minister Holst who made Oslo Agreement, and I was I was there in the design and in the building of the theater. And in 2006, I built another theater, Theater Day Productions in Gaza, and they are both destroyed now. So I did a lot of work also in the technical side for the theater and, for, and in the administration side. Theater in Palestine, it's so close to the people. People would be very uh, amazed by, it's a country where it has been in a war for the last hundred year. There is no theater schools. There is no theater 
I mean, centers training. And it, it's one of the most countries in the Middle East that deliver theater. I think in, in Palestine, there is like number of, like you can say there's like 20, 30 group of theater and they all work. Theater and Palestinians, it became like, you know, it's uh, in Gaza. I, I worked eight years in Gaza. I was training theater the production. We train uh, actors after high school. When they finish and they don't want to continue school, we make them, we say, come and taste the theater. And we do training of three, three years with them. There is hundreds of students of theater, their production and Hakawati theater that has been trained. And they all work just before the war. I mean, I know that there was like 10, 15 company and organization that is working theater. Um, yeah, uh, storytelling, you know, Hakawati, it means the storyteller. Uh, it's all, every corner, every place there is a story to tell. One year, I worked with a director from Holland, Lisbeth Koltov. She came and she wanted to do directing workshop with us. And I was training a group in Hebron called Yes Theater. And she was so amazed because you go out in every street, in every corner, you find a story, you find a story to tell. There's a lot of things that is happening. In that month, we created four little shows out from the street with the actors and with new directors who like bring stories and their and 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 uh, their training actors and yeah, so theater in Palestine and theater played a very important role in the in the life of Palestinians. It's a beautiful way of expression. It's a beautiful way of of telling the story. I remember in the tours when we do, it's like every story starts with, we want to tell you this story. And you know, it's like, we are really storytellers, all of us, we are really storytellers and it connects people. Yeah, it became part of the Palestinian life. Theater became part of the Palestinian life. That's, that's, so, that's so powerful. I'm just, I'm sitting in the in the power of that. Thank you. Um, I'm I'm curious. Speaking of the importance of, of of storytelling in Palestinian life, have there been, as you've you know, as you've worked in different places, as you've worked with communities to create pieces, have there been particular stories that have that have stayed with you or stood out to you, um, or sort of themes that that repeat as you as you go through this process um, in different places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a lot of uh, I did a lot of monologues. I did a lot of storytelling myself, where I was a storyteller. And uh, you know, things have their nice positive side and sometimes negative side. I have a lot of successful stories, and I also a lot. I have a lot of frightening stories, because at one sometimes you go into the theater and. You people, you know, it's like it's the unknown. People wants to hear, you know, what's uh, uh, yeah. There is a lot of stories where you you we, we go to the villages and we are in the show, and people get so involved and people jump into the stage. They want to be part part of the show. You know, it's like uh, uh, it happens a lot of time where you are. We are in the in, in, in a village or in a camp where, and all of a sudden somebody interferes and he says, you know, he goes, he, he, he wants to answer. He wants to, 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 to say something about something happening on the stage and we let it go. One of our best shows that uh, was done by Francois Wassalim called El Atme, The Darkness. And The Darkness, it's, it starts from the audience. It starts from the audience, and the actors are mixed between the they are in between the audience, and they slowly, slowly start going into the stage, and the audience thinks they also can go into the stage, and all of a sudden you find the audience participating in the play and in a natural, in a natural, uh, natural way. 
uh, I did a lot of shows with Francois, me and him, in duets. And it's also connected too much to the storytelling and to how we we involve the audience into into the show uh, we do. Yeah. What do you think is the role of what is the role of the audience in 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 performance? Like, what is the um, what do you think is the is the function of of participatory theater in that in that way? The audience, they are the main character with us. They are playing. They are there. They, we see them. We look in their eyes. We talk to them. Uh, you know, we don't have a fourth wall. We don't play. The audience is there, and. Uh, the, the work goes immediately to the audience and they do a, like the show we are having now in France. In the middle of the show, we stop and we have a dialogue. We have a debate. We have a debate with the audience in the Aristophan show. Uh, I did with Francois Gilgamesh, the epic of Gilgamesh. And we made it on a small table, two meters with puppets. And this was a big fight between Francois and me. I said, Francois, I don't like puppets. And he says, but it's nice. I said, Francois, I hate puppets. And, and what you are putting me in a play where I have to move plastic bags and cans and you say that you want to make Gilgamesh with it. And this was a real fight between me and Francois. And then we put it in the beginning of the play so that people comes in. And Francois is looking for me and he says, well, he disappeared, he's stupid, he doesn't like puppets, I don't know what to do. And the audience says, oh, but show, what shall we do? Can we go? I mean, are we, are we going to have the show? I said, I don't know, we have to look for him. And then I come and then I tell the story of Francois and his plastic cans and he wants to do the Gilgamesh. And slowly, slowly, we take the audience into the show and we start and then you end up with a beautiful show with full light and music and so, so the relation with the audience is the audience is there always. Thank you. I love that. I, I love that using using that that real life conflict to create the beginning of the piece and bringing the audience in. Uh, that's and we fight in the middle of the show. So I say, I told you, I thought it will not work. <laughs> I love it. Um, oh, I have to say, as a reminder for anyone just tuning in halfway through our, our conversation, uh, you're you're watching No Summary, which is Golden Thread's uh, online conversation with artists who don't fit in a box. Um, and I'm speaking here with Amr Halil from El Hakawati Theater in, in um, Jerusalem. Um, uh, to con to continue the discussion, um, I'd love to hear more. You mentioned right now the theater is is touring a show in in France. Is that right? Um, yeah. I'd be curious. Yeah, I'd love to hear more about it and and what it what it's what it's like to be to be touring the show in in this moment. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't easy to do it now because I think uh, after the since the beginning of the war, uh, we were like in a big. You know, oh, I mean, yeah, it's so uncomfortable uh, to theater and to, for the theater, I mean, we stopped, we closed for two, three months because for me, it was like people are paralyzed, you know, we cannot really, and uh, this was a decision, do we go? Do we make the show? Do we go to Europe now? Is it the time to move since we have been always moving? We talk about uh, Aristophan. We did the woman assembly of Aristophan with a French director. And it was programmed in Montpellier and uh, in Perigueux. And uh, yeah, we, we wanted to also to face the audience. Yes, we wanted to to carry something out to the audience, and the decision was, yeah, let's we should go. Last year we did uh, two nights in uh, l'Institut du Monde Arabe in the Arab Institute in Paris. It was a big success for there with the with the audience, and we said we shouldn't lose this moment. Uh, to be honest, we hesitated. We don't know if the audience will. Yeah, we wanted people to be with us. We wanted people to feel with us. We, they wanted people not from guilt, not, but we, 
we wanted to do the right thing, is it the time really to go out and speak? Uh, and then we said, we should do it. Uh, there were uh, three shows. I have pictures and videos, beautiful. Full audience, uh, people are like, excited. Big discussion about Palestine and about uh, the war. And last night in Perigue, it was also a uh, very important. Uh, I don't think, I'm not doubting this relation with the world. I'm not doubting that it's important to go outside and to speak and make theater. But uh, we were so harmed. We were so and painful to Yeah, to ignore what's happening and to close our eyes and to say, yes, we can just jump and go and make a tour like nothing is happening. Uh, it was an easy decision really to, to go and make this tour. Uh, but we don't regret. We think uh, we did a very good work and this is our mission. We are the ambassadors and we always carry the world. We always carry the situation. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of uh, productions that we did with European theaters, uh, with Germany, with France. We have a big history of big shows and plays that we were touring and making co-production together. Uh, now we are planning for a new show that will be specified, you know, about, about the situation in Palestine and Gaza. And this will have a big tour in Europe, and uh, it's still in preparation, but uh, next year, inshallah, it will be ready. How do you balance with within your mission uh, the the idea of creating creating work for communities inside Palestine and touring? How do you balance those those two those two things in your work? You know. Uh, I think mainly we focus on what we want to do in Palestine because I think it's it's the most important. Uh, since 2000, we do a lot of work in schools. We do a lot of work in uh, for children, theater. Uh, 2000, um, 1992, the Puppet International Puppet Festival was created. And since then, we have every year in uh, September, October, a big festival. Uh, yeah, we do balance. Uh, the main work, I mean, the main mission is really to work in Palestine and train. But uh, we think it's uh, it's very important to keep the, the international phase. And we the international phase, since like 2000, uh, we do it more with partners in Europe, with the Takawati from 79 and until uh, with Francois until 2011. We used to do it like our own shows and we take them to Europe. But now we have a lot of co-production. Almost every year we have one partner. And uh, yeah, this there is this dialogue. There is this dialogue between us and our partners in, uh, in Europe. Uh, we don't have much with, with the United States. We have some artists, uh, individual actors and directors. But I remember a very important tour that we did in the United States with the play of Kofar Shamma in 89. It was like a three-month uh, tour of Kofar Shamma. Uh, yeah, I, I, I remember this now because it was very important. Uh, the store and we have been almost almost everywhere. Uh, yeah, I think the message with theater to Europe is is very important. I think that the 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 message the the message that goes with theater and art to to people it's uh, it's it's very strong. It's a very strong from my experience. It's a very strong it's very strong me message. I think theater change things in people and uh, locally and you know for the, for our community and for abroad i think we are lucky to be artists and actors 
it's a funny job. It's so nice to be the messenger of your people, of your life, of your of your inside, of your heart. Uh, it's a beautiful job. I think we are lucky to be theater bankers. What a beautiful way to to put it. I'm just like writing down nuggets of, of wisdom here <laughs> that you're sharing with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'd love to hear also, you mentioned a little bit earlier in our conversation uh, and, and throughout a little bit, you've mentioned the work that El Hakawati does for youth in terms of training programs and, and plays. Um, I would love yeah. to hear more about that and, and, you, and the role that you feel that plays. Yeah, uh, in 2000, I, in 2000, yes, I started also working beside my job as an actor. I started working with an organization called Theater Day Productions. This is, I mentioned before. And in this organization, our mission was to establish satellites of theater youth maker in a, th in a theater for youth. And uh, we took three areas, Tulkarem, Nablus, Tulkarem, Nablus, one area, and then Gaza and Hebron, Hebron. And there we made this curriculum of three years where we take young men and women after 18 and who wants to be drama teachers and actors. And we work with them. And from the first year, we train them. They go on stage with their first show. And then this program goes on for three years. And slowly, slowly, they became or drama teachers or actors. They both learned both. But some of them became really more actors and some of them became... A... We made agreement with the Minister of Education, with the Cinema Minister of Education, we made in, in, in OU. And the agreement was theater day production called, you know, like... Every theater, every school must have a show at least once a year. So we have been in schools making shows for you, for the students. And slowly, slowly the program developed. We started making plays with the students for the students. You know, we were in schools everywhere almost all the year. And this was a big program. There I was in the administration side, and I also was a trainer. We invited a lot of, tra a lot of trainers from youth theaters, professional youth theaters from Holland, from Germany, from France. And we developed this organization and became a very important organization that made out like 100 young artists who works between theater and drama. I don't think in Palestine, there is one school with no theater, with no drama teacher in the whole country. Uh, in Gaza, there is big, big love for theater. The Gaza people, they have their sense of humor. It's beautiful. The theater really fits them, you know. And uh, I remember stories where we go to schools in camps. And you have these young boys who are really the fighters. And some of them, sometimes they come with guns to the school. And you go there and you make theater. And slowly, slowly, you bring them into the stage. And by the end of the year, they are acting on stage. They are, they are making their own shows. I receive letters from them saying, you have turned us from, you know, back. We, 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 we made change. And we did a big study with our Polish uh, uh, partner, how much theater and drama changed in the, in the educational for, uh, for the students, in Gaza especially, Gaza and Hebron, theater and drama helped them to, to, to help them in their study. You know, it's like, they really want to do the theater. So they started going to school. They started being more committed to school. They want, and they became, they, they, they make like good marks, you know, after being like the failure of the classroom. All of a sudden, they became more, uh, it helps them more in their education. It lies, it's reconstructed them, you know. Theater and drama made them more neat, made them more, yeah. 
I don't know sometimes how to put things in words, but it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it changed their life. It changed their life, yeah. That's incredible. I want to, I, I just want to lift up a, a um, comment that I see in the chat from Marina. Marina says, uh, I got to be in the audience last summer for a site-specific piece that al Hakawati did, taking the audience through the old city of Jerusalem. It was a beautiful piece that made me see uh -huh. the new city in a new way. Does al Hakawati do other site-specific work? Uh, great question. Yeah, we'd love to hear more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this last year we did, uh, we did a play called the Jerusalem Misery, Misery, for say for that. And uh, it's a story. It's it's a theater that we make in the in the old city. We made uh, a, in a specific area in Jerusalem, the old city itself. Uh, it's a very historical place, and it goes from the entrance of the wall, and it goes by the Via Dolorosa, and it goes to the mosque and to the church, and there we made a play that describes the area and describes how the life was there and describes all the important people and uh, things that happened in that area. It was a musical and we did it with four actors and three musicians. And uh, it was a beautiful walking show. You know, you start in one place and then you take to the, you take the audience from one place to another and you make the whole journey and the whole journey based on a story of a love story of a boy and a girl who will get married who gets married in the end with a wedding but we walk the audience all the way in all the stations of the play and we're going to do this uh, this year in, uh, in august we have another we have another play that will also take another part of the city and we'll talk about another story yeah we do a lot of uh, of this walking theater. In the 1992, I did with Francois the Conference of the Birds. Conference of the Birds, it's a poem of Farid al-Din al-Attar. And uh, we took the text of, uh, of uh, Peter Brook, uh, what's his name, the writer for birds. And we made it a walking show in the city, in the old city. You know, the trip of the birds, where they walk from house to house, from state to state, from city to city. And uh, yeah, it's it's important, the mobile, the I mean, it's not mobile theater, it's a, it's a moving theater, it's a moving play, yeah. That's, that's, thank you for that great question, Marina. That was exciting to hear about. Um, I'd love to also, I have a question related to that, but I would also love to uh, invite other folks, if you have questions, please feel free to to put them in the chat. Um, I also want to uplift something that Catherine Corre put in the chat. She said, you're a brilliant ambassador. I'm a thank you, she said. Um, so yes, feel free thank to you. add other questions in the chat. Um, I'm, I also would love to hear related to this idea of site-specific work and walking theater, how how do you feel that um, a sense of place impacts the work that you make? You mentioned, you know, creating creating work uh, in in different communities around Palestine. I'm I'm wondering if there's if there's something about a sense of place wherever you are that that shifts the. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, creating a show is connected to to the place. It's also connected to where, to where it's happening. Um, we did a play. <laughs> we did a play called Jericho in the Year Zero, and uh, we did it in '94 at the same month that Arafat was signing Oslo. And at that time, they're saying Jericho, Gaza, Jericho. And uh, I think we get inspired by the spaces, you know, by you know, by yeah, we 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 we. The space and the, 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 it's very important in our stories. It's very important in the shows where we do uh, that we do. <laughs> the people also, you know, it's like as I said in the beginning, we do theater in dialogue with audience, and it's in dialogue also with the space. It's in dialogue with the city. It's in dialogue with the 
with the camp, with the, with Palestine, the story of Kufr Shamma that we did in 87, it talks about all the Palestinian villages that were destroyed in 48. And the whole play happens in a destroyed village where we go there and we discover the village. So the whole play comes out from where we find the tiles and we find the doors. And so the place is very important on, uh, the place is very important in uh, the way how we design and make the shows. Thank you. Uh, lifting up uh, Sherry's question in the chat. Sherry says, I'm happy to hear these things. I wonder how you're able to do walking theater with the increasing danger in Jerusalem. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of the things that I'm a little bit worried about it now, because the the the, the trip that we the play that we did last year, it walks exactly in the roads where the settlers have took houses, the Israeli settlers, and they follow us, and sometimes they throw garbage, and uh, and uh, yeah, we have. The police insist that we go and take permission from them. And so we say, we don't take permission. This is our Jerusalem. I'm not going to take permission for you to walk, uh, from you to walk. Uh, it's not easy and it's dangerous sometimes. But uh, yeah, we have we have to do it because also uh, so half of us also lives there in, in between these houses. So it's not easy between the soldiers, the armies and the settlers. Uh, it's not easy to do it. It's, it's risky and sometimes it's dangerous. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, got another question from Yusuf El Gindi. Hi, Yusuf. Um, Yusuf asks Could you elaborate on your experience during your US tour in 1989, particularly the cancellation of your show at the Public Theater? Oh, my God. This is a whole, this is a whole story. Yeah, in, uh, eight, in uh, the play has been, the play toured from 87 to 89. 89, we got an invitation to do a tour in uh, the United States. And uh, one of the first invitation came from Joseph Pab from the Public Theater and uh, to invite the show. And around this, we had tour manager who organized other shows. We were in Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Woodstock, Seattle, Vancouver, Washington. It was like 10, 15 cities. And one day, just one day before we are ready to fly from Paris, Joseph Papp called and he said, I can't say, I changed my mind. I, I, but, uh, he said something that was funny. Uh, yeah, something like I changed my mind and then for us, it was very important because the, the shows of the public theater were like covering some you know, expenses. And, uh, and it took us like four hours to get this to the news. And the whole United States was just like everywhere in all the, in all the newspapers, everywhere that Joseph Papp has canceled the Palestinian theater account. So this by itself made the whole, you know, made the whole story about the show. Uh, the shows in New York were the last shows, you know, like we were there in the beginning of July and we were touring like till August, September. And it was a big, you know, it was something very big in the news. And everybody wants to know why Joseph Papp canceled this show and what is this show? So we made the tour. We were everywhere in the United States with a big audience, very successful shows. And uh, in the last uh, week, I mean, uh, DTW, the Dance Theater Workshop in New York, they picked up the show and they said, we will take it. And they took the risk because Joseph Papp says he, he was threatened by they will cut his fund from you know from his board we say you are bringing Palestinian theater and it's play about all the destroyed villages in, in Palestine so so he said I cannot do this and uh, there was New York Times Village Voice New York it was like big articles about 
his uh, his decision. We came to New York and we built up the play in the dance theater workshop. And in the opening, 15 shows in New York were sold out just before we came, all the shows. And uh, the night of the opening, uh, Joseph Park came to the show. And, uh, you know, after the show, for me, this was like, I had the main character in that show. I had, I had the main role, I had the leading role. I, I think this was like the best show of my life that night. But the big hall, I, I, I was playing the fool of the village. Well, I was 24 years now. I was 25. Now I'm 60. <laughs> and uh, I was singing, dancing to a big show. And that was really the end. The audience were like encouraging. It was like a beautiful show. Immediately after the show, all the press jumped into Joseph Fab. They want to ask him why did he cancel the show. So he really had no answer. We went down. And we found all the posters of the show are broken. The glass of the theater are broken. You know, it was like big demonstration from, you know, on people who doesn't want the play to be there. They called the police because my poster, my picture was on the poster and the poster was everywhere. So they have to bring me police and they put like a guard in front of the hotel room. And it was like, it was a big story in New York. But with a big success with the audience, was beautiful. And uh, yeah, the US tour was great. We met very nice people. We went very deep into faraway places and we met we, we met really people who really never heard of Palestine. And all of a sudden they see these these actors, they are making the play and we met all kinds of people from very simple people who never heard of Jerusalem and to big politicians. It was, it was a big experience. It was very important experience, the tour of USA with, uh, with the story of Kofan Shaman. Thank you for that question, Yusuf, and thank you, Amr, for sharing that, that, that story. I think it's important for, yeah, for those of us in the U.S. to, to hear and to, and to know, yeah, to know the history of, of that. So thank you. Thank you. Um, we're beginning to have to wrap up our time in a few minutes, and I, I wanted to ask if, if there's anything else that you'd like to share with our with our audience. It's been such a huge honor to speak with you, and is there anything else that you'd like our, our audience to know? Um, yeah. Wow. Well, it's... Uh, like I just said before, before we went into the, we live in a big state. We live in, in Palestine. We live on a big theater scene. Everything has a story. In every corner there is a story. Yeah, I think everywhere is the same, but here things get different dimensions. You know, here uh, you watched the TV yesterday and you see three, see three settlers shooting three guys walking in the street in the old city. And this is like, it's a, this is a stage, this is a life stage. Uh, I think we will keep making theater. I think, like I said, we are lucky to, to be making theater. I think as I uh, know that uh, I have been in many different countries and cities and I see theater and I see theater shows and productions, I'm proud to be a Palestinian. I'm proud to be a Palestinian actor. I'm proud of what the theater movement in Palestine did for Palestine and what the theater and artists, Palestinian artists, what they did for Palestine. I think we were all good messengers. I think al Hurriya now, they are also in France in the same festival where we were, although with all the difficulties of of uh, Janine's situation. I am in contact with Gaza with a few actors and artists who are still working in their tents to do work. They are trying to go out also to speak. Uh, yeah, we are here, we will not disappear. We will not disappear. We have, uh, we have a big history, we have big tradition. We made our own tradition of theater. 
we created our own tradition of theater. We made our own school of theater. It's the storytelling. We always have a story to tell, and we will always have story uh, to tell. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amr. This has been Thank so you. incredible. And I, I'm just, I'm so grateful for all that you shared today, all of the wisdom and, and that you shared with us and our, our audience. Um, I'm I'm disappointed to have to wrap up this this conversation. Um, and, and so, yes, so just sitting in, in gratitude. Um, um, I'd like to also thank HowlRound for hosting this um, and to just share with our audience that all No Summary episodes uh, live on Golden Thread's YouTube channel and HowlRound's website. So if you'd like to check out the additional conversations in the series, please do. Um, thank you to Wendy Ray as our live stream technician and to the rest of Golden Thread's team, Sahar, Michelle, Sheila, Linda, Saluna, and big thank you to all of our audiences for joining today. Um, stay tuned for the next episode of No Summary. Uh, you can visit uh, Golden Thread's website, goldenthread.org, for that uh, info, or you can join the email list to stay on top of programs and events. Thank you so much. Any final words, um, Amar, before we wrap up? I really thank you. This was an opportunity for me to talk, to be in touch with the audience after uh, starting nine months of really being, you know, like big uh, pain and big disappointment. I'm very happy to be with you after also two months being in difficult health situation. This is my first public appearance since two months because I was in a, a little bit uh, health problem with all the difficulty of the war. I'm very happy and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. Shukran. Shukran. Thank you. Shukran. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.